Advent blessings to you this day as we continue in our Advent devotion series, thinking the names of Jesus for our tree, as well as using the book Advent in plain sight. Today's name from the tree we take down is the Vine. Jesus as the Vine. Again, this is another one of the I am statements in John's Gospel. Looking at John 15, chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Jumping down to verse 5, Jesus again says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away in the branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire and are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Jesus as the vine, may we be truly connected to that vine. As we turn in our Advent devotion series, Advent in Plain Sight, talking about tears this week, today we talk about wiped tears. We look at Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne on, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These are those these who are clothed in the white robes. Who are they, and where did they come from? I said to them, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spend his, send his, spread his tabernacle over them. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst any more, nor will the sun beat down on them, or any heat. For the Lamb is the center of the throne, will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wiped tears. You see, we know how the story ends, don't we? This one we're anticipating this Advent season. Brian Blount, a New Testament scholar and president of Union Presbyterian Seminary, talks about the power of knowing how the story turns out knowing that, the ultimate, that ultimately God's justice and love prevails. This knowledge gives us the courage for the living of these days, does it not? No matter the challenges and travails that followers of Jesus Christ persist in this world, we continue to do justice, love kindness, and walking humbly with God, whose home is among mortals. The God who became, becomes mortal. The God who will wipe away every tear from the eyes of those who have known great suffering. The description of the heavenly worship found in Revelation chapter 7 paints a picture that inspires us to strive for God's kingdom so near and yet so far away on earth. Every tribe and nation together praising God around the throne of grace. Would that that would this that would that this were to be right now in our congregation, wouldn't it be nice? Every tribe and every nation kept safe and secure under the shelter of the one on that throne. Would that we made that vision a reality in the here and now, and not just hope for it in the sweet by and by. Wouldn't that be nice? All people, all languages, and all richness and beauty of their cultures not be erased or consumed, but 
gloriously intact as they worship the one God and creator of us all. What if we began each day reading these words of Revelation, envisioning this holy promise, bringing God's future into our present in big ways and in small ways? If we who prepare for Christ's birth and anticipate Christ's returns now, and we know the end of the story, God's promise to wipe away every tear, alleviate hunger and thirst, and gather together the people from north, south, east, and west, what are we prepared to do about it? May we make manifest the prayer we pray week in and week out, that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as we journey together this Advent, being bombarded by worldly headlines of division, of violence, of upheaval and suffering, of gunshots in schools. Can we remember that Jesus is coming not to condemn the world as condemnation worthy as it may be, but instead to save the world? Can we remember that the Messiah comes that we might have life and life abundant and participate in the life-giving God vision? Knowing that God will wipe away every tear from every eye, will we get a head start on this action? Knowing how the story ends, can we begin that work now? If we know God's promise for the future, can we who follow the incarnate Lord help embody it in the present, no matter the cost or risk of such counterculture living requires? Thoughts to ponder. We know God will wipe away every tear. Can we help make that happen now? Have you ever had the experience that gave you a glimpse of earth, on earth, of this heavenly worship? When have you had your tears wiped dry by another? Or when have you helped console someone else? May we be doing the work of God of wiping away tears. Let us pray. To the one who is on the throne, we worship you. Lost in wonder and praise, we gather to give thanks for your steadfast love, your care, your commitment to making your home among us. When our tears flow in the face of earthly suffering, we remember your promised future when crying will be no more, and all will be safe, together valued and whole. Make that sure ending. Compel us in faith to bring your future into our present. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we know that God will wipe away all tears. So may we go forth in peace and hope this Advent season to do that work now.